TJ. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And on this episode, we're going to talk about season three of Picard. We're halfway through. We've watched four episodes. Uh, and this is the third and final season of the series. This season is being billed as sort of a reunion mm-hmm. of the Next Generation crew. And kind of. We're, we're, it's building towards that. We're seeing some of the, some of the crew members yeah, a little slowly, in. slow build. A little slowly, a little slowly. So overall impressions, what do you think of the season so far? Well, it's way better than the other two. Yes. Um, I, I feel like they're getting back to some of the writing elements that make this genre and these characters work well. Mm-hmm. You know, I really like, I, I mean, this is, we're spoilers at this point because I, yeah. I can't really talk about it without give, giving away some details. I mean, I, I, I feel compelled about the mission that they're on. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. I feel like the stakes are high, but they're not saving the universe. You know, they, they are like trying to save people and things like that. So it's, it's understandable. Um, you know, there's, there's some type of uh, group out there that's collecting really powerful weapons. They're going to do something bad. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy that the main plot isn't like, we're here to save the universe because I never yeah. want to see anybody save the universe again. I'm so tired right. of that. So I like that it's smaller. There's a lot of great um, storytelling going on here. Very mm-hmm. good characters. You know, I'm not completely blown away like, oh my God, but I, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I feel like it's very Star Trek, mm-hmm. which is a compliment because, you know, so many attempts at making Star Trek fail these days. So yeah. they they finally got it. I don't know who the writers are, but they're doing a much better job. Mm. Yeah, one of the things, I'm thoroughly enjoying it as well. I think it's a vast improvement over season two, which to me, in many ways, was a travesty. I mean, the first couple of episodes were great. Um, especially when they brought in the Borg. And then, oh, yeah, let, let's set 90% of the series, or the season, in the 2020s. I mean, I want to watch science fiction. I don't want to watch our characters from the future walking around in modern day. It was, to me, that Talk was about a ridiculous. No-brainer. How about this? How about this? In Star Trek, never time travel again. Mm-hmm. Don't don't you don't need to time travel. Go back to the past. It's, I already saw it. We it's a cheap it. device. It's easy to abuse and overuse. It's hard to Boy. do well, and it's easy to write yourself into a corner. Yeah, right. if, exactly. if done well, so, it's great. But what were they trying to save money by filming on location? It, it was it was terrible. It was ridiculous. All right, but but no, but but now got the, the other side of that coin is that right. I think they really understand here, like what people want to see in Star Trek. I want to see people in a ship. In space, yeah, how about a starship? For, yeah. yeah, for a good chunk of the time. That's crit- isn't that critically exactly. important be- for what Star Trek is? In yeah. my mind, that's got to be in there. It's part of the brand. A, a lot. It's part mm-hmm. of the brand. They basically, you know, what show better illustrates people in a ship doing things, right? Yeah. Like they, doing they need stuff. to do it. You know, they're not needed aliens with weird foreheads. You know, <laughs> essentially, they are doing what I call a beam down mission. Mm-hmm. They're on a mission. They're trying to do something. There's bad guys. They're fighting. There's combat. There's intrigue. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot there's, of good character cool interaction. Ships. I mean, Titan, what a what a cool ship! I don't. Titan is a is a beautiful iteration of yes, the Star totally Trek. agree. I, like I love the ship. A- absolutely, I love, it. love yeah. it. So I All think right. they they did some very interesting things in here. Um, you know, we don't know who really the villain is. Like, we don't really know who this organization is or any of that stuff. Um, but I, changelings, remember, right? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, but well we there's two really, yeah. and we don't well we don't know how there's multiple different leads, and we don't know how they're interacting. Right. So we know yeah. that the the changelings, the Dominion is involved in some way. We don't know if it's a splinter group or if they're making a play for the for the Federation again. Probably a splinter really, group. I think that's really they, interesting though, because yeah. they're, they're again very yeah. interesting villains, and uh, you know they, they 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 have their bias against the solids. You know, again, the, the the great great villain characters. We know there <laughs> the, the other group that stole this advanced tech, and now it's in the hands of the you know the the uh, the raider woman, mm-hmm. yeah. whoever she is, and. Um, you know, Crusher, Beverly Crusher is involved somehow, and her son is involved somehow, and she pulls in, you know, Riker and Picard. And Picard. So there's a, there's a lot of intrigue going on. I'm I'm buying it. I'm enjoying the plot end of this. Um, characters. So you know, again, they're they're playing off of a successful series with great characters, um, and. You know, I don't think they're doing a great job uh, on carrying those characters. Forward, it's a B level. It's a B it's level. It's a B level. It's it really is. But there was one giant, I go. think, yeah, I mean, <laughs> right really by. massive violation. One of the ones that so takes me out of the show and just was, you know, 
the worst example of writing, I think, in the whole series. So when... Season, episode four. Yeah, episode, episode three. It's at the very end of episode three when... Was it? Yes, oh, okay. the end of episode three, because it's basically the transition from episode three to episode four, and Kirk and... I mean, Kirk... Uh, Riker, and, <laughs> Riker and Picard are on the, right. on the bridge. Riker is the acting captain because the regular captain got his leg broke. Shaw, who's and, awesome. Captain yeah, Shaw's awesome. Shaw's a good character. And they're facing off against the Raider, um, and they fail, right? Mm-hmm. She, she, out, she out fights them. With portal technology. With portal technology, and the, and the, uh, the Titan is sinking down into the okay. gravity well. In a nebula, yeah. And it looks pretty or grim. Is it? it does. Looks, looks like pretty grim for our heroes. You know, how are they going to get out of this no one? No power. I mean, yeah, the ship's like... dead in the water. Um, and Riker turns to Picard, who was basically egging him on to, to fire on, on the other ship, and says, you've killed us all. Like really dramatically in front of the whole bridge crew, and it tells them to get off the bridge. And yeah. then, well, that's then the beginning of the next episode. He tells them to get off the bridge. Um, right, right. Riker wouldn't do that. No, he would not. That do was that. horrible. Yeah, that was so. One of the things you should never do is violate a character's internal consistency. Mm-hmm. I don't care what problems Riker is dealing with. You know, he had to leave his wife because you know Diana because his kid died and he's struggling with all that. Great, nothing would motivate him to act like that on the bridge of a ship that he is captaining. To that particular to, man. And to act- anybody. Let, first of all, in front of the entire bridge crew, he just said, we're all going to die. You can't do that as the captain. Yeah, that would never happen. That would never happen. Did he ever take the Kobayashi Maru test? I don't think I so. I mean, right? I mean, <laughs> that's the whole point of the Kobayashi Maru test, that you don't freaking do that. Right, right. When you, when, even if you think you're all going to die, you don't say right. we're all going to die. And he did. we did <laughs> see him for seven seasons passing the Kobayashi Maru over and over, and over and over, over right? I mean, but also, the, I took offense to be the confident. scene oh. because he did it to, to Captain Picard. To, to Admiral to, Picard. To, to, to a worse. guy that he went through hell and high water with over and over and over again, he just wouldn't do that to It him. was cheap drama. It, it was. It cheap was. Drama. It failed. It violated the character. Now, you could, you could imagine that scene done properly, you know, where... He pulls him aside. Or yeah. let, let's say in the moment that, you know, the, the, their maneuver failed, they're, they're sinking into the nebula, and, and Riker thinks, that's it, we're dead in the water. And he's never going to get back and see Diana, and it's you know they're all going to die. You can you should see that on his face, and that's it. You yeah. don't really he doesn't yeah. need to say it, and you know he might even give an angry glance at Picard because Picard was sort of egging him on in this direction. Although it was his decision at the end. He of the gave day. the order. He, he gave, gave the, the order, order. Riker. Um, but Punk. then you know he could throw an angry glance at Picard. But then like all of his experience and his Starfleet training should kick in. And he needs to hold it together for the bridge crew, and you know to do his duty. And if he if he needed Picard off the bridge because he couldn't look at him, he wouldn't, you know, send him packing. Yeah, he w- he would come up with some excuse. You know, can you you know send him on some bullshit errand? You know, maybe Picard would realize. Like at first he's like, "What? What you're asking me to do? What?" And then he Clean might realize, the "Oh, I see. You're you're." It's the perfect example. You're of dismissing bad writing, me, though. and then yeah, they sort of give each other knowing glances, and he walks away. And we see everything in the facial expressions exactly. or whatever. Exactly. But on the surface, they're a captain and an admiral. You know, not only at that level, but, but among legends. the best in legends in the fleet. I, I've, I, I mean, it made so little sense. Out of so any bad. people in the universe, they're among a group of people. So. The captains of starships and admirals yeah. who used to be captains of starships are the people that can handle moments like this. Yes. And the fact that they blew that, like, it kills me because it makes me think, oh, holy Christ, the writers don't actually know what universe they don't they're know what in. they're doing. Right. They can, don't know what they're doing. Can you doing. imagine Kirk saying that line? No. Ever? Never. Ever. Never. No. 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 So anyway, that was a All failure. Right. But overall, All right. Low epic point failure. overall epic failure. it's an enjoyable show. There is Absolutely there, worth it. There is good character bones here i think that the actors are doing a fantastic job again this they all to, they, the writing needs to be better this all do, comes gonna, back to the writing. let me pick one other bone here so the the ship is out of power and they go on and on about how little power they have and can we steal it from here can we steal it from there and then they go to the hollow deck mm-hmm. right which yeah. is a notorious power hog yeah 
Now, they recognize that this is a problem. They I thought the same the thing. I know where you're going. Yeah, you know where I'm going. So they, so they do retcon a little bit, which at least they did that. At least they didn't completely ignore the yeah, fact they, that they said that it has its, 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 its own isolated it has its, power source. It has its own isolated power source. So why not tap source. into that energy source? Right. So, I but thought they really, were going to do that. I thought they were going to do that. I know. That. I know. But first of all, and, and the excuse, I mean, clearly they just, they just wanted to be on the hollow deck. And so they came, they came up with that really stupid, thin excuse. Yeah, it was bad. Rather than just putting them on a non-power-hungry part of the ship to have the same scene. It doesn't matter. It didn't add anything to that they scene. Did, you're they totally did. right. It was a yeah. bar. It was, it was a bar. It was a bar. You could, there could be a bar on the ship. Like There ten was forward. actually 10 forward. Oh, my God, you It was you're completely right. unnecessary in order to, again, pull us out. And, and then we're thinking, like, Really, they they gave the highest priority to the hollow deck so that if the if the ship is going down, they don't have a backup battery for the computer or a backup battery to reignite the warp drive. Yeah, they have it for the hollow deck. But where's the engineer no running sense. around with the tools, going, "I'm going to hook up the battery to the Hoosie Rods or to, to the backup"? I would have paid. I would have bet money that that's me what they too. Were do. That's and what I thought they were happened. going. Do you think right. all right? Maybe they're they're clumsily setting us up for that. If anything, nothing, if anything. This is what they should have done. The freaking holodeck is a puzzle-solving machine. Yes. You go into the holodeck and go, all right, guys, we have to simulate how we're going to save the ship right now. Right. We could do it on the holodeck because it will represent the mechanics yeah. of the ship. Sure. Yes. You know, that would have been interesting. Something. That would have been interesting. Let, we need to get power to the holodeck so we could solve this problem. But instead, they had two people having a drink. You're so right, Steve. Right. It was unnecessary. Christ. It was so Terrible. stupid on so many levels. I got lazy writing. It violates... The, the fans, you know, knowledge of the universe, it violates the world building, they violate the characters, right. it doesn't make any internal and then, sense. And then, they, when the moment terrible. passes, it's like it didn't happen. Yeah. That's the other thing, like, they barely, oh, I'm sorry about that, it's like, oh my god, you guys had a, almost a relationship ending moment there that you didn't, it didn't even, right. like, dent them, they just went on like nothing right. happened. Yeah. Right, the, but, the after, we, we, you're talking about Riker and, and yeah. Picard, yeah, 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 they, then Riker, yeah, confronts Picard, you know, in wherever room he sent him to, and I don't even get their exchange. I, I watched it two times, and I and I don't understand what Picard was saying. I mean, and or what Riker was saying to Picard. He starts off by like, "I'm talking to you as a courtesy," and then he ends up with, "You were right about what though?" And was that apology? I didn't. I didn't get it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, didn't get it. It, it was but, just like they clumsily just like let's just get past this awkward moment that we created for some cheap drama and go on. Right, uh, right. You know, it was so bad, so bad. So the, back to the holodeck real quick. Yeah. They, they saved it. Maybe they didn't save it, but <laughs> at the very least, there was a great scene when Captain Shaw comes on and explains why he well, yeah, hates that was, I'm he saying hates, that was the payoff. He hates Picard yeah. because of Wolf But that didn't have to be on the holodeck. No, no it, didn't. it didn't. It didn't. But it was a great scene on the holodeck. The best yeah. part of the holodeck scene was that scene. Come on. This is, but what is this? Holodeck. The seventh, the eighth Star Trek series. This is a, this is a franchise, right? There's a, a generation of Star Trek fans out there. You're telling me you don't got some Star Trek nerds on that set or in that writing room, you know, red teaming every decision you make yeah. when you're writing an episode. That, like that's that? that's a question. That's a fantastic point, Steve. Yeah. Because at this point, Please. we've seen Star Trek mishandled so many times yeah. in so many different ways that they clearly don't have the Star Trek experts who have all the plot in their head yeah. to be able to tie loose ends together. Or, or just good screenwriters. Right. Just saying, does this make sense? Why is this happening? Yeah, it's more common sense than, than you know, minutia of the, it's of both. the Star I mean, Trek. Both is nice, yeah. but, but just the thing is, if you have a, somebody who loves the, the, the franchise, like, like us, right, who could say things like, but he's a Starfleet officer. Would a Starfleet captain act that way? I don't think so. You know, or wouldn't they have a protocol for this? Or a pro that's the other thing. Like when they're like, hoo, hoo, ha, ha, hoo, like they're running around, you know, like <laughs> Keystone <laughs> cops, and it's like, <laughs> I would think they would have a protocol for this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you have to make the challenge greater. It's got to be greater than your heroes. You can't make the you can't make the heroes <laughs> dumb right. in order to pull the plot. Right. I think yes. it does. Yes. Got to make the villains smarter. That's in, egregious. In the Star Trek handbook, Steve, I think it says on page thirty six. <laughs> The captain should never lose their shit on, on the, the bridge. bridge. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Should never tell everyone on the bridge, we're all going to die. All going to die. <laughs> right. All right. All right. So setting that down quietly and walking away. <laughs> yes. It's still it's a lot of It's enjoyable. I love seeing these characters. It's a reunion show. I'm letting it be a reunion show. I'm not, you know, I'm not going in with any expectations. I got to be honest with you. I'm a little surprised how much better it is in the other two seasons. Yeah. So I'm going to ride Especially with it. Especially season I'm going to watch the I'm, rest I'm of it. I'm loving Worf. Yeah, Worf yeah, is Worf great. Yeah, Worf is great. Worf is great. Great to see him. He looks good. It's a little campy. 
everything's a little campy, yeah. but it's okay. It's okay. It's not bad. And I, I, I like that they're weaving in Deep Space Nine plot. I mean, Me I watched, too. Yeah. I rewatched the entire series of Deep Space Nine oh, like last year. It's fantastic. I, I got to do that again. It's among the best Star Trek that's out yeah. there. It really is good. The Dominion again are great villains. Oh, one of the we were talking about the, the on, the on the episode on good villains. Gul Dukat is a great uh. villain. He was villain. fantastic. One don't, of the don't best. cross the streams. On our I episode. know, but one of the best <laughs> villains ever. And you know, so anyway, <laughs> it, I, so I like crossing the stream with Deep Space Nine. It's fantastic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot to like about this. It's not great. Look, I if give, you like, I give it a B overall. It's if you fine. like the Next Generation, you'll like this. Yes. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. Season three is fine. It gets right. the job done. There's, it might it might get better too. Like I'm I giving it, it I'm giving it that space. Yeah. You never you never it, know. It, it could ramp up a lot. I'm expecting more I'm people. Hope. I'm expecting more reunion to happen yeah know? i I'm, think so all right too. guys Me if too. you <laughs> enjoy star trek star wars science fiction speculative fiction fantasy the list goes on we talk about everything on this show superhero superhero genre, genre. Yeah. if you enjoy this stuff alternative history then join us for future futurism. episodes futurism <laughs> that's right you can go to alpha quadrant and the number six.com to check out our podcast version of this show and all of our over 100 episodes of this show we have a really extensive back catalog and if you enjoy the show as much as we do, then consider becoming a patron. You can go to patreon.com forward slash alpha quadrant number six, and we will see you next week.